In this presentation, I will discuss the gyrating motions displayed in cellar spiders. As you can see here, the spider bounces back and forth on its web at a very fast pace while making gyrating motions on its web in the presence of the stimulus, which in this case is the pin. The cellar spider uses its body to create the gyrating motions while using its legs to move away from the stimulus. The gyrating motions and vibrations made by the spider aided it in eluding the stimulus and making it difficult to pinpoint where exactly the spider was. In order to truly grasp an understanding for this behavior made by cellar spiders, we need to address Tenbergen's four questions and look at both the proximate and ultimate causes for the gyrating motions. Not much is known when it comes to the causation of the gyrating motions made by cellar spiders. I hypothesize that nerve impulses aid these spiders in creating the vibrations. I believe this is the cause because in order to move in fast circular motions, you also have to make use of the body and move individual body parts. This requires electrical signals to hit distinct axons along the body. Although not much is known about the internal cause and stimulus for this behavior, it is very clear from the video that the pen is acting as an external stimulus and causes the spider to feel threatened. I also hypothesize that the gyrating motions created are a product of nature slash genes and not nurture slash the environment. This seems like the likely case because cellar spiders are reclusive in nature and prefer to live their lives in solitude. It's hard to believe that this behavior is learned because cellar spiders have little to no interaction with, uh, with one another. It is also suggested by Hughes 2001 that cellar spiders create gyrating motions for much shorter durations in the presence of a predator as compared to when they are in the presence of prey. The function of this behavior is to assist cellar spiders in evading any primary threats. The vibrations allow the spider to hide its exact location and deter predators to enhance its survival rate. This behavior also increases sp cellar spiders' reproductive fitness because it gives spiders a chance of surviving the predator and the attack, which allows it to produce more offspring, which in turn increases its overall fitness. Lastly, I hypothesize that the overall factor involved in helping and keeping this behavior relevant over the course of evolution is the fact that these spiders live in solitude and not in groups. Since cellar spiders live alone, they do not have the luxury of other spiders acting as distractions whenever a predator arises. The gyrating motions act to hide the spider's exact position and provide the spider with a defense mechanism. Scientific literature on the gyrating motions exhibited by cellar spiders is little to non-existent, but there is some literature on orb-weaving spiders in regards to the vibrations used as a defense mechanism, much like the cellar spiders. In the article, Schroeder and Spiller 1992 emphasized the importance of the vibrations in order to escape predators, which allows them to hide their exact location by be becoming a blur. They also note that this form of predator defense is the most optimal and even prevails over the use of a larger body size as a defense mechanism. One major concept covered in lecture that I am able to link this behavior to pertains to group living and social behaviors. Since cellar spiders live in solitude, they do not benefit from group predator avoidance and do not partake in theories such as the dilution effect and the selfish herd theory. The gyrating motions performed act as an ecological force that shapes sociality because they allow the spider to forego the use of groups in regards to predation pressures by still remaining somewhat undetectable.